This is one of those events you have to experience at least once in a lifetime when you are a globetrotter and love the luxury of an atypical evening with a light and mischievous atmosphere. Between the reality of the most delicate gastronomy and the phantasmagorical world of the show, Brussels designer and scenographer Charles Kaisin has struck again to make live experiences poetic and tasty beyond any dream and fantasy. His concept? Unconventional surrealist dinners, inspired by, of course, Belgian surrealism that are attracting luxury brands striving to celebrate the many festive occasions that adorn their lives. Today we dive right in so you can experience the magic of one of these evenings that do more than stand out. They become legendary. It's in Brussels, more precisely at the Palais des Beaux-Arts, renamed Beaux-Arts, that the formidable campaign Proud to be Belgian comes to a close, also under the patronage of the designer Charles Kaisin, who had taken up residence all summer at the Mas Mechelen village, celebrating the colors of the Belgian flag in a custom print, pattern and decor for this village of the Bister village shopping collection. First of all, it started with an installation five months ago in our village. We did a campaign at the Bista Village shopping collection and the Masmechelen village, and closely associated with the art world. Charles Kaisin, being an artist, designer, architect, the crossover was natural. The meeting point was natural to make an extraordinary event. Tonight, the most noble of Belgians were gathered to celebrate Belgitude and the talents of a people who are often known for their excessive humility. This surrealist dinner is the proud moment of this campaign. Our guests were composed of artists once again linked to our DNA, the national and international press, and the brands with which we collaborate today, and those with whom we will collaborate maybe tomorrow and then all our partners who accompany us. Among the most prestigious guests, we noted Princess Lia of Belgium, Baron Edouard van Meulen, creator of the house Nathan, who dresses all the crowned heads of Europe, and the hatter Elvis Pompilio. And of course, to direct and manage the evening, Charles Kaisin, who was very busy. It's a dinner that is said to be a surrealist dinner. So it's a dinner, you see, where there is only one big table. There are 100 guests, 100 precisely, not one more or less. So that means that there are 50 servers, which means that everyone will be served at the same time, simultaneously. And all the servers, we did rehearsals, like a ballet. So that means that there is a choreography, which means that at each passage to serve or clean, it's really like a ballet of dancers with costume changes, different themes on Belgium, and in relation to themes that are dear to different facets of fashion, architecture, culture, folklore. At the table for this proud to be Belgian evening, they were 100% Belgian guests enjoying the fine cuisine, staged as it should be, in a ceremonial choreography, constantly reminding guests what Belgitude is, like these black, yellow and red bells at the cheeky Monacan Piss unveiling a smoked trout appetizer. A Belgian surrealist evening that has amazed its famous guests, including beautiful actresses exiled in Paris, but present in Brussels to talk about her next project. I am very proud to be Belgian. I have always been proud to be Belgian. It's surprising. The show is ravishing and funny. The food is very good. I loved what I ate. And as I think more about it, I loved the chocolate. There was the atomium in the dish. It was funny. I'm going to do theater in April with my songs and a text in the middle.
With Omahang waiters, for example, for the very Brussels touch, every service on the menu brought a lot of surprises, thanks to Chef Pierre Rizimont's effective recipes. Delicious. First, what we ate was delicious. To spend time with all these talents from different horizons, the exchanges were amazing. And then the dinner was a show at the same time. So we had a really great time. I'm in Dennis Dercourt's next film. I'm in Nicholas Berry's next film. Louis Aubert's first feature film. I have a theater project with Isilde Lebesco, among others. There are other things still to come. Ah, yes, and then there is The Red Bracelets again, season three, which is shooting now. A worthy representative of Belgian surrealism, but for a literary version, actor and writer Stéphane Duchrot left the Parisian film sets to bring his little touch of madness to the adventure of the surrealist dinner at the exit, a frame to better play on words. There are a lot of Belgians. It's quite amazing to think that this little country provides, produces. Me, I always enjoy saying that Belgium is not a country, but a state of spirit. And it's true that one composes with our singular minds a particular state. I've always wanted to change the setting, but that's it actually. What's interesting is changing the rules, but keeping rules to recreate something within the frame, but to have a frame a little rounder, a little more rectangular, a little more square, a little bigger, a little smaller, but still have a frame, but to recompose it, reinvent the measure, the space, and to, inside the space, do something. And for this extraordinary evening, we have perfectly recomposed the space outside of convention. Between the pantheon of Belgian paper personalities, from Diane von Furstenberg to Benoit Poulvorde and the play on themes, the dinner ends on a must-taste chocolatey note by a master in his field, Pierre Marcolini, who imagined an atomium, a tasty Belgian monument that is simply delicious. We are never safe from a stroke of luck, never. So tonight, that must be it. As they say in English, a lucky day. That's it, right? Years ago, I made a book with a photographer called Serge Anton, and I reviewed this picture, and I find it sublime and very surreal of the atomium. So one can or cannot like the atomium. There's a big debate about it. I told myself, when it comes down to it, I have to redo this picture, but out of chocolate. So already, it's a performance. The second thing is to extract from this photo a kind of ball that would come out of this chocolate, which would be this chocolate mousse with caramel heart, a little praline, and bring acidity, with what is called today a fruit called yuzu, which is a Japanese fruit. We have all the quintessence of Belgium. At the same time, this kind of gluttony we can have, these roots that are the world of chocolate, but this openness that goes to the Middle East or to Asia, and therefore more specifically here to Asia. Everything made with great chocolates from two cocoa beans, one from Ecuador, 100% Ariba, and the other from Cameroon, a Yaoundé with a Forestero. After the pleasures of the palate, the show ends in style. Sequins that explode for a guaranteed perfect visual effect and an evening that has put stars in the eyes and belgitude in your head.